Hi, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Welcome to my coverage of SpaceX's uh, Miraputa. I'm going to probably slaughter that. I can't wait to hear them, them actually pronounce it. I'm sure I'm saying it really wrong. This is a really exciting launch because this is the first time that we are actually seeing um, SpaceX refly their brand new Block 5 booster. So this is the fourth launch of a Block 5 booster. Uh, this is the first time they're reflying one, though. And, of course, the whole point of Block 5, the whole point of the Falcon 9, the whole point of SpaceX is to reuse rockets. Because why would you throw away $62 million rocket when you can reuse, hopefully, eventually, as much of it as humanly possible? So, this is obviously no different. And uh, this is this is a pretty standard... Uh, you know, a launch for these guys because it's just launching a community, a 5,800 pound, a kilogram uh, communication satellite. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you guys something. And this is the way that I'm now going to officially start doing this. Check this out. So, did you know you can go to everydayastronaut.com and now I actually have a pre launch preview? So, you can literally just look and you can see. All, so, I get people asking me all the time, hey, is this. Is this one gonna land? Are they recovering the the fairings? Is it uh, what times it launch? Well, now you don't have to ask me anymore. You can just go to everydayastronaut.com. Look at this, guys. I did this for you and for me, so I can have notes when I do this stuff. But check this out. So yeah, here we go. This is going to be launching. I always start my streams about 30 minutes before T minus zero. So this is starting. This will be launching at 1:18 a.m. Eastern time because it's launching um, out of Slick 40 in Cape Canaveral Air Force Base um, or Air Force Station in Florida. Uh, so this is SpaceX's older launch pad between the two out there on the East Coast. There's also 39A. This is Slick 40. Um, this is Block 5, like I said before. This is the first reflight of Block 5. Um, this is heading out to a geostationary transfer orbit, which is where most communication satellites reside. It's a pretty standard, um, fairly high-energy orbit, though. You have to um, put a lot of Delta V into that first stage. It has to get going really quick, so that means this will be a drone ship landing. They will not be... They don't have enough uh, margins remaining to turn the first stage around and return it back to land. It will just continue following its ballistic trajectory and landing out on the of course i still love you drone ship and uh yeah other than that look at this i have all those other fun facts so here's a here's a fun little rundown this is the 60th flight of a falcon 9 rocket this is the 15th flight for spacex this year uh 20 if this lands this will be the 28th successfully landed core uh the 15th reflown booster uh and the second flight again of this particular booster uh, this previous this was the first block five that flew for uh bongo bond who sat one which um yeah was was the first flight of a, of a block five so it actually turned around pretty quickly guys and something that i think is really fun check this out so um they have this picture they showed today of the this exact booster sitting on the launch pad and notice this there's a lot of speculation about what this is you know is this some kind of alien insignia when it came up you know went to space and alien scribbled on it uh no this so what they do especially i think with some of the very first flown uh boosters uh you know since this again block five is fairly new um they want to make sure everything checks out fine these are most likely radar and or sonar or ultrasonic some kind of um skin penetrating uh, marks where they can check and double check their welds, double check stress points. Um, it's kind of a unique pattern. I don't really know too much more besides it's for them to double check things. Um, yeah, so that's what that is. I thought that was kind of a cool, fun little fact for today. Um, a lot of people were asking me about that on Twitter. Also, people were wondering what these stubby wings are. These are what hold on to on the, um, let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it a little easier. Um, this is what holds on to, so there's the transport erector that holds on to your rocket, da da da. And I think mine broke off because this is delicate and I, it, don't kill me Ollie. Um, but there's a thing that holds on to it while it's going out to the pad and that's what that is right there. I am missing the whole top half of that actually now that I realize that. Uh oh, Ollie's gonna kill me. Um, but yeah, so that's what those things are. They, they just wrap it around and then when it's vertical they, they let go. Um, but there's also still that littler clamp, too. So it's just a, a fairing, like, hugger, basically. We're going to call it a fairing hugger from now on. Um, yeah. So, again, this is pretty much, uh, this is pretty much, we're going to call this the, uh, the sequel to Block 5. Because this is the first time they're reflying it. Look at that dirty old thing. I love it. And, again, so this is, the black inner stage is, is a signature of, of Block 5 boosters. 
the first stage down here uh, is very dirty. We're gonna I'm gonna be releasing a video very soon about you know why it's it's half black and half white with that s really strong line in between the two. It's a cool video. I'm pretty much done with it, but I have even more exciting videos to show you guys. Um, I just got back from I was down in Houston for the the announcement uh, of the new commercial crew astronauts. Which was a lot of fun. It was really cool. But I actually got sent down there. Boeing actually flew me out to check out the CST-100 Starliner and to see their new spacesuit. So I actually got to get in the spacesuit, which that was the first legitimate um, flight suit I've ever been in. Uh, it was unreal. And I know we're obviously all, all of us are SpaceX fans here. Obviously, that's why you're tuning in. I'm obviously a huge SpaceX fan. But you guys know me. Hopefully you know by now I'm not a big fan of tribalism. I'm not a big fan of this versus that versus this. Actually, I do that all the time on my channel, this versus that. Hmm. Sounds like I just called my own bluff. Hey, it looks like their stream's coming up. Um, we'll pull that up in here in a second. It's just the music so far. Um, but realistically, I'm just a big fan of space. And I just want everything to go well. I want us to advance our knowledge. I want us to advance exploration. I want us to have backups on backups on backups. I'm a huge fan, especially after seeing um, how Boeing is working on the CST-100 Starliner. Um, it's some really impressive stuff. I get why both Boeing and SpaceX have... It's been a hard time getting the stuff online. I totally get it. This is really, you know, they're being way more, NASA's being way more strict about the commercial crew program than they were about any other previous human spaceflight activity. So this is like, it's hard stuff when, when the, the amount of certification that these things have to go through. It's insane. So I can't wait to show you guys that. It's going to be awesome. And also, the voice of science. Hi. Nice work as always. Do I plan on, uh, I don't know if Elon's going to be at IAC. It looks like they're going to have their own thing here at the end of August that might, um, take place of IAC for, for Elon Musk this year, so we'll see. Um, I think that's when they're going to be announcing more stuff about PFR. History Soup, can BFR go to moon and back without fueling on the moon? Um, I don't actually recall. Um, they have to refuel in orbit to get to the moon. Um, I think they would have to refuel on the moon. Uh, don't quote me on that for sure. Uh, and there is one more thing that I wanted to mention before we totally just take questions. I did need to remind you because I have been doing a very bad job of promoting this. Uh, I am a, um, a judge, a guest judge for Project Mars, which is this really cool competition um, put on by NASA uh, where they want you to make a film or make a poster. So if you are an artist, if you do films, even if it's on your iPhone, even if it's a poster you sketch it with, cr with crayons, I don't care. Submit it because we need stuff to judge. I am actually one of the guest judges. Who's this fool right here? Look at that weird looking guy. Uh, I'm, you know, co-judges with actual astronauts like Nicole Stott. Uh, I'm with real rocket scientists like Bobak. Um, and then even Gareth Edwards. He directed this movie called Star Wars. No idea. So if you guys want a chance to win, if, if you enter the film portion of the contest, these are due August 31st, so like in, what, three weeks or something, um, $10,000 grand prize for the film, uh, $1,500 uh, grand prize for the, and this is all, I, I'm just saying this because I think this will be cool, I want something to judge, I hope we have enough entries now, so if you want a chance to uh, enter this contest, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I'll, I'll see your work and all of us will get to check it out. Um, Project Mars, this is projectmarscompetition.com. Again, that's projectmarscompetition.com. Um, enter, because otherwise we won't have anything to judge and then I'll get scared. So please enter. Um, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Show me what you got. Make me cry. I'm a big fan. If you want to know the trick to how to make me cry, put people like uniting, working together. Um, collaboration, especially like enemies coming together. That makes me cry. That'll actually make me cry. Make a film about, you know, like enemies coming together and, and exploring Mars together, and I will actually cry. You have my word. All right, let's pull up the SpaceX live stream um, as we wait here for them to pull up. So, yeah, um, hello to Discord. How are you guys? <laughs> um, so, how is everyone? It's been, guys, I, I can't even tell you. I have so many videos coming out in the next like two or three weeks. I hope you don't get annoyed at me. It'll probably literally be like six. Um, it's gonna be insane. So get ready, tell your friends. You're gonna see what it's like to wear a spacesuit. You're gonna see what it's like to fly a CS-200 Starliner. You're gonna see what it's like, how mission control at NASA is going to be working with the commercial crew uh, program, how that integrates. 
you're going to be learning a lot about um, cryogenic fuels and uh, and soot. And you're also going to learn, what was the other one? Oh, that one might not come out for a while because we need to wait until they catch a fairing. So um, again, real quick reminder that this launch, it's an East Coast launch. They are not attempting to recover a fairing. So SpaceX has been working on recovering the $6 million fairings that house uh, payloads like these things right up here. Boop, 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 boop. And oh, the other ones are Dragon Capsules. Um, oh, awesome. Lucas out there went to KSC and saw Falcon 9 on the pad. <sighs> I'm jealous. I'm stuck up here in Iowa. Um, but yeah, um, but they are not recovering fairings on the East Coast. So yeah, unfortunately. Um, I, I, my theory is, I, I don't have anything to really back this up, but this is my logic would be that they've kind of had to make some changes and iterations between trying to catch the fairings because if something's wrong, they need enough time to kind of change things. They don't want to just try to catch it over and over and over again if their system's flawed. And the West Coast just has the right amount of cadence and it's right there at Hawthorne, so maybe they can quickly iterate and get those fairings things swapped out. And that's just my theory that the West Coast has the right cadence, the right amount of launches to iterate changes between things that they want to tweak on this recovery attempt, including making the arms huge on Mr. Steven and stuff like that. So, oh, Elite Geeks, $2 to start a, start a fund to buy a, a seat to space for you. Thank you, Elite Geeks. I, you know, it's funny. Um, I didn't think I would ever actually want to go to space. I, I never had aspirations to be an actual astronaut. I'm just like a, I'm just a professional space cheerleader, really. That's, I just want you guys to be excited. I want you to tell your friends and get them excited and have resources for your friends to get excited about because sometimes there's that high, scary uh, barrier of entry where it's hard to explain to people why you're so excited. That's kind of been my whole goal. It's like, here's why I'm excited. Now you can also be excited. Um, but recently, honestly, watching... I think New Shepard and seeing Virgin Galactic get closer and closer to, to suborbital hops or suborbital space flight tourism. That's that's got me thinking. I could do I could do that. I could ride in something for a couple minutes and hang out. Um, but I don't want to work in space. Never make me work in space. So that's my new theory. Just fly 720 to Mars and beyond. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. And Schizo Jedi, second my seat to the moon. I would go to the moon eventually once it's like super. I, it needs to be routine, super safe. Nothing scary. Like, just make it nice and easy. Um, oh, Stream Chat is interested in my shirt. This is, I don't know where I got this, but I'm working on updating my web store. So I'm going to have tons of cool shirts, I promise. And also, real quick, thanks, Green Axis Space. How do they know where the fairings will land? GPS coordinates and based on the ballistic trajectory. Let's get to Tim's to Space Boys. <laughs> Thank you, Fortnite. Uh, stand, up liber stand for liberty. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I'm trying. Corona Kivo, you're out here at the Cape trying to catch a time exposure for the launch. Good luck, Corona. Uh, send it to me on Twitter. I'll be checking that out. Um, best of luck out there. Enjoy the launch. I hope it's beautiful. All right, guys, here we go. Good evening from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. It is August 6th at 10.04 p.m. here and 1.04 a.m. local time at Slick 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. You are looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 awaiting its 1.18 a.m. Eastern Time launch. My name is Lauren Lyons and I'm an engineer in our flight reliability department here at SpaceX and I am pleased to welcome you to tonight's webcasts of the Mira PT satellite launch for our customer, PT Telcom Indonesia. Now tonight's launch is the 15th by SpaceX this year and is a reflight of our first ever Block 5 rocket. We're going to attempt recovery of the first stage on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, which is situated 635 kilometers off the coast of Florida. If we're successful today, this is going to be our 28th successful recovery of a stage one booster. Tonight's launch window is two hours long, but we are shooting from the very top of that window. And we are currently at T minus, just under T minus 13 minutes and counting. Go Lauren. <laughs> Arvin's trying to uh, <laughs> bribe me for the Project Mars competition. I love it. That's hilarious. So you're looking at a live view of the Falcon on pad 40. Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket standing 70 meters tall, which is greater than the wingspan of a 747 aircraft. The first stage, which is the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle, is our booster stage. And it, along with the nine Merlin engines on the bottom of it, does the bulk of the work to get Falcon 9 off the ground 
and up into the thinner parts of Earth's atmosphere. Now you can kind of see it from this image here, but do you see all that dark soot that's on the rocket? That's because this booster has been flown before. This is the first ever Block 5 booster, and it supported the Bengabundu Satellite 1 mission just over 12 weeks ago. The Block 5 upgrades allow Falcon 9 to be reused 10 times or more with minimal refurbishment between each launch. And today, we will attempt this booster's second recovery. Now right on top of Stage 1 is our second stage, which has with it a single Merlin vacuum, or MVAC engine. This is the engine that ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the Miraputi satellite to its geostationary transfer orbit. Now on the very top of the rocket, as you can see here, this conical structure, this is the payload fairing, and safely encapsulated within it, the Miraputi satellite. This is what protects the payload from aerothermal loads and heating and contamination upon ascent. However, once you reach that vacuum of space, we're going to jettison the fairing as stage two continues its journey to orbit. Note that we will not be attempting recovery of the fairing today, as the recovery vessel, Mr. Stephen, is out on the west coast. Now this large white trust structure that you see on the back of the rocket, this is the transporter erector, or TE, as you may hear it called out on the net. We use it to roll the rocket out to the pad from the hangar and to raise it to its vertical launch position. The TE also routes the vehicle's fluids, power, AC systems, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and satellite up until Falcon 9 goes on antenna power and clears the pad. At liftoff, the TE will retract, clearing the way for Falcon 9's ascent. Here we go, guys. T minus 10 minutes and 50 seconds. I can't wait. Real quick, uh, thank you to Chris and Joe and SPFL SU. I've not forgot about you. That's a great question. Um, real quick, they basically said they thought we'd probably see the second Block 5 fly before the first one because they're going to tear down the first Block 5. Falcon 9 rolled to the pad with the Mira Petit payload early Monday morning and went, rough, went vertical roughly at 12.30 p.m. local time. The launch director conducted the go no go poll for pop load at T minus one hour, and we began loading propellants at T minus 35 minutes. Speaking of those propellants, Falcon 9 is a bi-propellant rocket. It uses kerosene, or RP-1, for its fuel, and liquid oxygen as its oxidizer. And to complete that fire triangle, Falcon 9 uses TTEB as its igniter fluid, which we'll see at T0 via that telltale green spark that you'll see right before the rocket takes off. So fuel load is currently full on stage one and stage two. Liquid oxygen load is about 90% complete on stage one and just over halfway complete on stage two. Now once both tanks are, tanks are full, both stages will continue to be topped off for propellants until T minus two minutes in order to keep those temperatures as cold as possible. Low temperatures lead to a denser propellant, which allows us to fit even more propellant into the tanks of the rocket. In addition to the RP-1 and liquid oxygen aboard, Falcon 9 also uses helium in order to keep the tanks pressurized in flight and the propellant flowing correctly into the engines to prevent any air bubbles or gases from entering the engines as the propellants deplete. Helium low became, began before the webcast went live today, but it's gonna continue to be topped off until about a minute and a half before launch. Additionally, engine chill procedures have begun, and this is where we open up those pre-valves between, between the first stage prop tanks and the nine Merlin engines. What this does is it allows a little bit of that cold liquid oxygen to flow into the turbo pumps, bringing them down to a temperature close to that of the super chill propellant that will soon be flowing through the engines at liftoff. The vehicle is healthy right now. The Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues. The payload went on internal power at T minus 15 minutes, and we're hearing the payload is healthy, and the weather is looking really good for an on-time launch today. The last weather balloon that was launched is showing that everything is within wind limits. We're not violating any of the cloud rules, and things are looking really good for an on-time launch today. Additionally, the range remains green for launch, and as of right now, all systems are go. That's what we'd like to hear. That's what we'd like. Okay, so um, Block 5, we did think there was going to be a long turnaround because uh, they wanted to double-check that everything they had designed and engineered into this new Block 5 architecture 
The Mira PT satellite being launched on today's Falcon 9 is for our customer PT Telecom Indonesia, the largest telecommunications and network provider in the country. Mira PT, which translated in Indonesian to red and white, is a reference to the colors of the Indonesian national flag. The satellite will play an important role in enhancing telephone and internet service for Indonesia's 17,000 islands, particularly for remote areas as well as other parts of South and Southeast Asia. The satellite is built by satellite manufacturer SSL and has 60 C-band transponders. It's going to be placed at 108 degrees east in geostationary orbit. The satellite will expand the company's coverage to new markets and complement other technologies such as fiber and submarine cable. PT Telcom Indonesia has put together a video about their operations that we'll show you right now. Okay, lots of times um, the audio on this will get flagged. So we're just going to turn that down. I wanted to answer some questions. Um, if you want to know more about this particular satellite, uh, watch it on, on replay on the official SpaceX live stream. Um, so really quick, the, the big question here is um, about Block 5 and why they're reflying it already. And the good question, the, the, I guess the better response would be, it must have all looked okay. They don't have to physically take the rocket apart. They can inspect it uh, with exterior things like, like scanning the skin um, using radar and ultrasonic or some, some a few different things, potentially even x-ray, just like they do with, um, with jetliners, um, especially like the Boeing, uh, the Dreamliner when they were working on that had a, carbon, a lot of carbon fiber, so they actually had to do x-rays to make sure there were no cracks in it. Um, so obviously if they're reflying only about 12 weeks later, it must have turned out pretty darn great. Um, I can't say for certain, but obviously they wouldn't refly it if, if anything, you know, they wouldn't refly it this quickly. 12 weeks is a pretty quick turnaround, especially for a brand new, totally new design, essentially. I know the Block 5, it looks similar to the Block 4. Uh, it's very heavily overhauled, so um, that must be a good sign. So we're really hoping tonight the reflight looks fantastic. Um, uh, Oliver, <laughs> uh, okay, but I really don't know what that means, but let's go um cody you need this shirt this shirt is great again i'm working on some awesome new shirts on my website um like this i want to have cool shirts for people like us that like actually nerd out on this stuff so um, i'll have a whole bunch on there start paying attention once they come in i'm going to take pictures of them and you'll start seeing them all the time i promise that'd be great uh chris why are you up <laughs> i know why because this is a this is a good launch it's the first reflight of block five that's amazing i can't wait benjamin wood Thank you. I can't wait to show you my Boeing Starliner video. I had a blast with Boeing. SpaceX, where are you at? Let's check out the Dragon. Let's check out your uh, your spacesuit. Let's do a head-to-head -head comparison if you want. I, I would love... I saw the SpaceX suit a year and a half ago uh, in February of 2017. I, I spoke at SpaceX. Got to check it out. Got to feel the spacesuit even. They took me back there. It was amazing. I had to keep my lips sealed for almost a year. Um, so get me in that suit, please. I would love that. Let's do it. Let's do the first comparison between the two new suits. Um, but I have to say, guys, Boeing suit was actually phenomenal. Uh, I, I don't say that lightly. Um, it's extremely comfortable. I couldn't believe the mobility. Um, yeah, we'll get more into that in a second. Noah, can you tell us a little bit about the starter fuel? It's TTEB, triethyl aluminum, triethyl boring. Um, they're pyrophoric, so when they come in contact with each other, or no, they're hypergolic. No, they're pyrophoric. When they come in contact with oxygen, uh, it sparks. So basically, they just shoot the two at each other, um, and as soon as they come in contact with oxygen, boom, they ignite, and that stays in the combustion chamber while they inject in the liquid oxygen, the liquid um, RP1, the rocket grade propellant. Um, hold on, we're, we're probably We are currently three minutes and 35 seconds away from liftoff. And Falcon 9 is moving into the final stages of the countdown. The first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. The first stage should complete its loading at T minus 3 minutes, and the second stage will finish its topping off at T minus 2 minutes. At the T minus 60 second mark, listen in closely for the announcement that Falcon 9 is in startup, which means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. The Mira Petit payload continues to be healthy. The Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. The weather is looking beautiful, and the range is green for launch. So as we near that T-0 mark, let's listen in to the countdown net. 
Okay, just a friendly reminder. So we have two minutes to talk here. After the rocket goes through stage separation and landing, it'll go into a coast phase today, and it'll be a, probably a 25-minute coast phase. That's a really good time to answer questions. So if, so if I don't see something here, there'll be a lot of time to talk about it. So um, thank you again to all those who have, who have tipped. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, so that's T-Teb in a nutshell. Uh, I could do a video about that someday for sure. Harvester of Sorrow, thank you! You've always been a SpaceX, but past years you've grown bored with it. Uh, but that that past few years you had grown bored with it. That has all changed since Falcon Heavy and my show. Well, thank you, thank you for bringing your passion back for space. It's not me, man. Uh, I'm getting excited just because there's some really, really, really exciting stuff happening in the space industry right now. Um, we're sending a bunch of exciting probes out there. Uh, we're making reusable launch vehicles. We're about to send humans back into space from U.S. soil. This is just an exciting time. Uh, to be a space fan, it's, it's, too locked, it's the best down. time. Uh, maybe not Apollo is definitely the best time. But uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Willidex, will this be the first time a refurbished booster will be used to deliver a payload? Um, no, they've actually reflown over a dozen boosters with Block 4, um, but they were only reflown once ever. They were never reflown more than once, and Block 5 is going to change that because it can fly 10 times, hopefully, eventually after they check things out without refurbishment so and a hundred times in its life so um they've reflown plenty of times ses 10 in uh march 30th 2017 was the first reflight uh of a of a of a landed booster um and it took almost six months for them to ensure that it was okay to refly um but now those turnaround times are getting quicker and quicker block five those turnaround times are going to come back to be eventually as quickly as 48 hours maybe even down to 24 okay, hours and start up that's amazing. So, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Um, thank you, BSG. You're welcome. I love what I do. I love cheering these guys on. So, uh, Nora, uh, Noah Shreve, notice DM1 was pushed back no till November. Do I think it'll actually happen then? Uh, I can't wait for that launch either. With DM1, with any of these demonstration missions for Crew Dragon or even CST100 Starliner, uh, guys, I don't know patience pants because again there's so much certification nasa's being extremely conservative about putting humans back on these things they want everything to be perfect which we all want too so i don't know what we'll to see let's, 15 seconds. let's listen in here Falcon the flight pressure i'll get Ten, back to the rest of you guys nine eight seven six five four Look for that three, green flash of the base two, there it is t tap zero ignition Little baby, go! Vehicle pitching down right. Stay on the pulse. Stay on. Something is shaking a lot. It is cruising already. One. Point eight million pounds of thrust now. Maybe even closer to one point nine. Wow. It's already going over six hundred miles an hour for those of us that are metrically impaired. Rocket nine is supersonic. Here we go. It's gonna reach max Q, that point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. We are one minute and seven seconds into flight, and as you can see. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off. Coming up next, you'll hear Max Q. Vehicle is experiencing maximum dynamic pressure. And as you just heard, the vehicle is experiencing maximum dynamic pressure. That's the point at which the stresses on the Falcon 9 are highest that, than they are at any other point during the flight. Looks good. Back engine chill. Everything is looking nominal right now. Not many ground cameras. Now coming up, you're going to have three events happening in rapid succession. The first is MECO, which stands for Main Engine Cutoff. That is where all nine of the Falcon 9 first stage engines will shut down. That'll be followed by stage separation. That's where stage one will separate from stage two. And then we'll have SCS-1, or Second Engine Start 1. That is where that MVAC engine that, vac that Merlin vacuum engine on stage two is going to ignite 
and carry stage two onto orbit. We hear that MVAC chill is looking good. That's where we bleed a little bit of that super cold liquid oxygen into the engine. We're going to get up to about a little over 8,000 kilometers an hour, most likely, before Miko. Set shut down. There we go. 8250, basically. Here comes stage separation right stage there. Separation on the left is from the inner stage looking up, on the right is the second stage looking back down. Good ignition of the second stage. You saw the and as you can hear by the applause and see on your screen, we've had a successful stage separation and ignition of that second stage MVAC engine. Look at that booster just get hit. Now coming by the up in about exhaust. 25 seconds, we're going to have fairing deploy. So those fairing halves are going to split away from stage two and make their way down to Earth. And stage two will continue on with the Mirad Petit satellite onto its parking orbit. Looking good, baby. Keep it up. In fact, D had a really solid startup, and all of the temperatures are looking really good. The burn is going nominally right now. Here we go. This is going to be fairing separation, fairing deployment. There it goes. Looks good. Fairing separation confirmed. And as you just saw, we just had a successful separation of that fairing. Once we get into the vacuum of space, we don't need it anymore, so we get rid of that extra second mass. Stage is all on a nominal trajectory. Space as you just heard, second stage is on a nominal trajectory. All now, there are going to be two things. stage two burns for this mission. The first is this one that is taking the spacecraft to its parking orbit. Acquisition of signal Once it Bermuda. shuts down, it'll coast for about 18 minutes before relighting over the equator to raise Mira Petit to its deployment orbit, the geostationary transfer orbit. Now, while stage two is doing its job, stage one, it's making its way back home down to Earth. Now, it's going to execute two burns. The first is the entry burn, which is coming up in about a minute and 50 seconds. The first stage is traveling at roughly 2,300 meters per second. And what this three-engine burn is going to do is assist gravity in rapidly slowing the stage down. If we didn't do that, it would overheat and it would break up. This slows it down and protects it as it enters the Earth's thicker upper atmosphere. Now, the second of those stage one burns is called the landing burn. This is a single engine burn where we light that center engine E9, and it brings the vehicle's velocity down rapidly from about 250 meters per second to about two meters per second in order to gently land the rocket on the Jones ship. Now, stage one landing should occur just a second or two following states, uh, second stage engine cutoff. So it's going to be a lot happening all at once, so watch closely for this next series of events. So we're going to be seeing the engine burn here. In a, or no, we're about 50 seconds second. away from that entry burn, but just note that once we recover this booster, we plan to fly it a third time later this year. As mentioned before, this is possible due to those Block 5 upgrades, which brings SpaceX closer to its goal of full and rapid rocket reusability. That'll be a good one to see. Number three, first time a booster will be used three times. This will be the one. That's so cool. I'll get to you guys in a second. Thank you, though. Just don't want to miss anything. We're coming up on that entry burn. I still call it a re-entry burn because it does re-enter the atmosphere. Right, we're getting close to that entry burn right now. On the right, MVAT continues to burn nominally, and there we go. <laughs> that entry burn has started. Stage one of the entry burn. Absolutely not. <laughs> I grow the worst beards. Stage one entry shut down. It is. Stage two continues to follow a nominal trajectory. You can see some of the plasma building up on the grid fins there, so just, just glowing there, a little bit. Stage one entry burn has concluded. Stage two That's is so still cool. looking beautifully. Oh, I love this. We're going to have that landing burn, that last and final burn on stage one. Look at how spicy it's gonna begin it gets. At in about a minute or so. And then, as I mentioned earlier, just a couple seconds after that, we're going to have Seco 1. 
stands for second engine cut off one. Ooh, don't worry, this is pretty normal. I just, I can't wait till we have continual coverage. We've had a couple where it's continual coverage, but not this one. All right, so this is why they have those titanium grid fins. They can handle that Stage one transonic. hot re-entry burn. All right, so it just went transonic, which means now it's it's going below the speed of sound. The air, uh, the Stop resistance has slowed it down. down. Here we go. So while we may have lost the view of the drone ship, sorry, the view of stage one, uh, we did get the call out that stage one <laughs> is yeah, transonic. Okay. <laughs> and it's making its way on down to the drone ship right now. So hopefully we'll get that camera view back. Stage one landing burn. Landing burn has begun. Let's see what we get. All right. Come on, baby. Where's this angle from? Oh, that was cool, it was looking up. That was a cool <laughs> shot. <laughs> It cut out due to it shaking so, the satellite. <laughs> so we lost the video right there, but It'll hopefully we that will was cool. get Check that in. back. <laughs> hopefully, but we have heard that we've had a successful second engine cutoff and that stage two is in a good orbit. Uh, hopefully we can get a view on that drone ship if everything stabilizes, but if not, uh, we'll give you an Come update on, on the, the status of the first stage we once we get it. Uh, what we're hearing right now is that stage two is in a good orbit. It's in That's its important. nominal parking orbit. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a little break. Oh, uh, as you can hear, we got yes. it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> this is the second landing of this booster. Landed successfully on board. Of course, I still love you. Yes. Welcome home. Second time. Second of many. It's a great shot right there. Yes. Get Meanwhile, room the second the stage grabber. is in a good orbit, as I mentioned before. It's going to continue to coast, and we're going to take a little break here and come back at T plus 26 minutes for second stage relight and then deployment of the Mira Petit satellite. Yes, I love it. I love it. This is this is the stuff that just I love. All right, let's let's go ahead and do a real quick recap of what we just saw. So we are T plus 10 minutes into flight. Like right now, this our Falcon 9 rocket just took off 10 minutes ago from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. It's on its way to the equator, basically. So it's already in its parking orbit. It's going to head the payload. The second stage is in its parking orbit. Once it gets to the equator, it'll do an inclination change and shoot itself out and do a geostationary transfer orbit. And that's where this satellite will be headed to is out into geostationary orbit. Um, it's going to be a communication satellite and SpaceX just performed uh, a nominal parking orbit. We're now in a coast phase as it heads towards the equator. The first stage um, of this booster, this is the second time this booster has done a mission very similar to this, almost exactly the same type of mission. Um, the first stage only burns for about two and a half minutes. Let's go to the second stage. Traditionally, it gets dumped in the ocean. No more, says SpaceX. We're going to save that $30 million piece of hardware. That first stage flipped around, followed its ballistic trajectory, re-entered through the atmosphere, and landed on the drone ship. Of course, I still love you, which is about 500 or so kilometers downrange, 31, 310 miles or so. I don't know. Somewhere around there, it kind of varies depending on the exact mission, but somewhere between, yeah, pretty far downrange, though, is what I'm getting at. And, um... This is, this is really exciting because this is the, the first reflight of their new Block 5 booster. So this is awesome. This is, this is the bright future we're looking for. This Block 5 architecture is designed to be able to refly um, 10 times eventually without any refurbishment and 100 times within its lifespan. That's amazing. That will be game changing. This is an exciting um, future that we're looking into here. So I cannot wait. Also, a really quick, I noticed in chat someone asked... What's with the naming of the drone ships? Of course, I still love you. And on the West Coast is just read the instructions. Those are from, um, what's his name? Um, uh, Arthur, oh gosh, I'm blanking. They're, they're book, they're characters in the, the book series. Um, oh my gosh, I'm totally blanking. Everyone will be yelling at me in just one second. Isaac, Arthur, 
Isaac Asimov. Hang on. Isaac Asimov. Yep. Uh, and it's the... It's a book series. They're characters. They're robots. They name themselves. I obviously haven't read it. Um, but yeah, they're from sci-fi books. Um, the Foundation Trilogy. Thank you, guys. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. All right. So uh, I owe a lot of thank you to these to a bunch of people here. Wow. Thank you, guys. Um, so yeah. So... Um, so, Noah, again, we're going way back. Just patience, pants, fingers crossed for DM1. I hope to see DM1, the demonstration mission of Crew Dragon. That's this guy. That'll be the Dragon capsule that flies humans up to space. Um, the demonstration mission without people on it. I really think we'll see that in 2018. I really, really think so. So, fingers crossed. Um, Timothy Smith, thank you very much. Chris, um, I'm no Cronkite yet, but... Uh, I'm the choice for intelligent insight and discussion for modern space flight. Thank you so much, Chris. Honestly, that means the world to me. This is just stuff that I love to do, and I love uh, telling you guys all about it and why to be excited. And Mary Smith, um, thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm glad you like watching. I love watching, too. That's why I'm here. I just want to watch it with people. So thank you. Corey, I, that means a lot that I've, I've helped teach your kids. That's what this is all about. They're our future. They are who we want to get excited they are who we want to inspire to study and work hard and get us deeper into space than ever before. Um, and RAR, <laughs> thank you so much. Nice use of the of the of the astronaut cheer. That is awesome. Thank you, Green Access Space Agency. Hi, Steph. Uh, Gary Lane, <laughs> like that's probably someone named Steph. Hey, um, Gary Lane, how much to get me to not shave my beard until BFR launch? You could not pay me to do that. I grow the worst beards. You don't You don't want that. I don't want that. My wife doesn't want that. My family would cry. I'd scare children. Uh, we just don't want that. I, And it might be still two or three years. I would be a homeless looking... Mm -mm, we're not doing it. But maybe. We're not doing it. Uh, Matthias, hey, how's it going? It's 7.30 in the morning here. Uh, you miss the streams a lot. What's, I've been streaming. I've been streaming all the launches. Just not as many other things very busy around here very too busy well i'll go ahead and say it too busy around here trying to keep up on about 20 different things right now but it's it's good stuff so uh eric nelson thank you uh the grounded pilot sometimes from the west coast of florida you can see the night launch is under perfect conditions a blue trail comes out behind the vehicle that is i've heard people from like tampa st petersburg and stuff talking about being able to see night launches that's crazy that'd be so cool I bet you can definitely see it if it's a return to launch site landing um, because the booster takes a lot more vertical trajectory. It doesn't go out as far and quickly. It doesn't do as aggressive of a gravity turn. So it stays up higher and longer closer to the equator for you or closer to the horizon for you. Um, so any of those CRS missions, if they're at night, definitely check those out. I bet you can definitely see them then. Um, Noah, uh, Shreve, always forget to say this, but I'm... I've always loved space, but you've helped me find a deep interest about it. Hoping to become a graphic designer for a private space company. That is awesome, Noah. Do it. Absolutely do it. Work hard. Be inspired. Find inspiration in the cool, nerdy stuff that's happening. This is exciting stuff. And, uh, yes, absolutely make it happen. Um, and thank you for saying hi. And Corn Doggo, do I like pineapple pizza? No. Nope. I'm sorry. I just don't. Pineapples. They grow from a tree. You don't put them on a pizza. They might bonk you on the head, and then you're going to try to eat pizza, and the pizza might fall out your mouth because you got bonked in the head by a pineapple. UD2. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Love your videos. Thank you. There's a ton. There's way too many coming. There's a ton of videos coming. So if you felt like I haven't been putting many videos out, you're right. But there's a billion, and literally, I have like two completely edited, just waiting for the right time to release them, and like three more coming out. There's going to be like four in the next two and a half weeks. So thank you. Uh, Joseph White, the ship's names are from the Culture Series. There we go. Culture Series by Ian M. Banks, not Isaac Asimov. Thank you, Joseph. Yes, I totally bonked. Man, that is... And come on, Discord channel. You guys... You guys really... Man. Oh, pineapples grow in the soil, not on a tree. I'm thinking of coconuts. Discord. Okay, you just totally made up for it. Uh, maybe there's a pineapple up on a tree and it's going to bonk me on the head. I don't want that either. I don't want a dirty, dirt pineapple. Okay, that's not space flight related, but thank you. Um, why is there loss of feed on many missions? Um, especially when the, the drone ship's far away, it, it's due to the curve of the Earth. There is no line of sight between where the drone ship is and, 
and, um, and Kennedy Space Center or SpaceX's headquarters. So they do have to relay it off a satellite. And in order to relay off a satellite, you have to have a dish pointed up at the sky. And that same dish is sitting on that drone ship. Even though the drone ship is about the size of a football field, there's a rocket landing there that produces a ton of plasma and thrust and shaking. You see how it sometimes shakes the cameras three miles away when it's taking off. So imagine a radar dish trying to remain steady uh, as it's landing right there within 100 meters, within 50 meters, basically, of it. I mean, it is just bound to shake like crazy. It loses link until the vehicle lands and then resets and can find it again. So um, there's a million different, uh, you know, crazy ideas out there on how you could put a tether out there and then maybe put a buoy with a thing. And trust me, I am really good friends with the person that literally that's their job. And they've gone through, trust me, they've literally gone through every idea. And by the time you actually talk about it, you're talking about spending millions of dollars for a five second loss of signal. And he's like, why would we do that? Why would we do that? Like, we'll just wait. We'll wait five seconds. All these ideas, drones and all this stuff, you know, you're talking about you can't have radio frequencies out there. You have to have people. People can't be within 10 miles. Sorry, 16 kilometers. Um, yeah, there's just a whole long list. But for now, we'll just have to have cutouts. Uh, <laughs> the voice of science. We might not be alive when humanity will colonize the Milky Way, but at least we can enjoy... Uh, the wisdom of these first magical steps into the cosmos. I love that. Absolutely. The voice of science. Absolutely. That's very cool. Uh, Schizo Jedi. Pineapples most definitely belong in pizza, especially with ham, sweet and salty. Ugh. Blech. We're not talking anymore about... Blech. No, thank you. Moonix. Thank you very much for your generous tip. Uh, XX Builder XX. What do you think? Well, the EFA, uh have a second stage the EFA. um discord help me out what's he talking about EFA? the international flying apples we'll get back to you on that um by the way i keep mentioning my discord channel it is exclusive to our patreon members um it's a great community i talk to these people all the time um <laughs> a u.s and an international <laughs> um you are wrong. Are we having a pizza fight? Corn Doggo says you're wrong. I'm glad I'm with Corn Doggo. Yeah. Uh, Mark Schmidt, Tim, thank you so much because you're your stream. Instead of going to sleep, I just uh, last minute drove to J oh, JX Beaches, which I believe is Jackson uh, Jackson Beaches, to watch the launch live. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is amazing, Mark. That's so cool. Thank you for sharing. I'm glad you got to enjoy the view. Um, I'm very jealous. Um, of course, apples grows on pines. <laughs> Marcus uh, and Ariana, thank you very much. Uh, Oliver, hey, can you try to pronounce your last name if you have time? Yeah. Goranson. 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 I have no idea. It looks like it's probably Scandinavian ish. I'm the worst pronouncinator in the world. Uh, Green Axis Space Agency. Steph made Space Flight Simulator. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I know Steph then. Awesome. Yes, very cool app. Thank you, Steph, and thank you, Green Axis Space Agency. All right, so, um, yeah, back to that uh, IFA. I, I don't know exactly what IFA is, XX, Builder XX. You may be thinking of ITS or BFR. Um, if so, BFR definitely has a second stage. Um, that spaceship portion, the BFS, is the second stage. It has four vacuum-optimized Raptor engines and three sea-level optimized Raptor engines for a total of seven engines. Uh, the first stage has what it... I don't even remember anymore. This is getting... It's like 30... might be 33. It's been a while since I've been thinking about BFR. Um, I think it's going to be slightly... Gosh, guys, I'm blanking. It's too late for me. It's 1240. Uh... Big A, we live in amazing times. Absolutely. 100% agree. Harvester of Sorrow, but that five-second loss of signal comes in the most interesting time. Think of when the Falcon Heavy boosters landed. Wouldn't have been as cool without the synchronized landing. It's true, but we can see the replays. They record the videos. They've done many, many, many videos of seeing it land. So we know what it looks like. We can watch it later. Sometimes they show us those videos. It's definitely no conspiracy or anything. It's just why would they spend millions of dollars of infrastructure in order to stream the thing that they don't that we get data on and we, and we see within five seconds 
Um, they're working on things like, like different ways of buffering and things like that too. So yeah, we'll see. Maybe someday they'll figure it out. But um, Brandon, are, are landing videos stored on the ship? Yes. Uh, exact, so the vi they do have internal recordings on all of the cameras on the ship. That's why we've been able to see recordings even after like uh, the rockets blow up. You know, that, that video that SpaceX made called How Not to Land an Orbital Class Rocket. Um, they show all those, the different landings. A lot of those were from different angles. They have definitely record internal recordings. Uh, and Jarwa, thank you. Great job. Do you think they're um, intentionally firing stage two directly into the top of stage one after separation for a little bit? Free Delta V to slow down. Um, I don't think that's, um, th first off, thank you. Um, oh, in flight abort. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so, uh, you know, um, no, it's, it's just literally, uh, they try to turn the first stage as quickly as possible so it doesn't have that blast going directly into the inner stage, but it still happens. So they do rotate the first stage out really quickly and then the exhaust still is hitting it. Um, but it's just really a matter of they, it's inefficient to be not lighting your engine. You're just wasting, uh, you're fighting gravity loss. You're getting closer and closer to your apogee. Uh, whatever the case may be, it's, it's advantageous to light up that second engine. Basically, as soon as you're clear of your, of your first stage, um, they have, have it timed out now that they can kind of tilt away normally. So it doesn't have just a hot and high velocity exhaust gas <laughs> destroying the inside of the inner stage. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, and XX Builder XX in flight abort. And thank you, by the way. Um, in flight abort. So the original question was. Oh, do oh there we go. This makes sense now. Um, good question. Um, XX builder XX. Thank you. I'm sorry that I, I had never actually read IFA before. Um, do I think okay? So when they do the in-flight abort test, that'll be um, an abort right at max Q. So as the rocket's getting to that maximum aerodynamic pressure, that's when they have to pull away from the rocket and pull almost 10 G's of acceleration to stay in front of you know a potential shock wave. If the, if the first stage were to blow up all of a sudden the crew capsule needs to be able to pull free from there and stay ahead of the shockwave and, and keep the crew safe so they're going to do it right at max q when it's going crazy crazy fast and um the thing is with that uh they don't need a second stage for that so i doubt it will have a second stage i think we're going to see some kind of dummy it might even be an old like f9r like their their grasshopper vehicle because it doesn't need much looks like we're coming back here this is the second stage, um, venting some, um, purging its its oxygen lines, which is why you also see ice chunks of, of, of solid oxygen as it, as it blasts out there. Um, yeah, that might be, a Bra uh, Brayart in our Discord says, isn't the final Block 4 Falcon being used for the in-flight abort test? Maybe. Um, they will use a Block 5. It's pretty much confirmed. Okay, Mike says Block 5. There we go. Um, Welcome back to the webcast. Oh, there we go, the webcast. Stage engine is about to briefly reignite for its second and final burn to place the satellite in its intended geostationary transfer orbit. SES-2, which will come on at a T plus 26 minutes and 22 seconds, it's going to burn over Gabon for about a minute, followed by payload deployment about four minutes later. So that burn should be starting in about 15 seconds. There we go. Get back your pressure. Looks good. And as you just saw, we just had a successful reignition of the second stage Merlin vacuum engine. You see the orbit changing now. This burn will continue for another 20 seconds or so. Power is good. The temperatures are looking good. The burn is nominal. Hopefully we'll get that live image, but 
Second engine shut down. Two should be coming up very shortly. And back shut down. And we just had successful shutdown of MBAC. Let's wait to here to see if we're in a good orbit. Nominal orbit insertion for payload deploy. Great, we are in a solid orbit. Now payload deploy will be coming up in just a few minutes here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pause and then come back to see the live deployment of the Mira Petit satellite. All right, uh, someone just asked me if I have a model block five with a crew dragon on top. Boom, ba -da boop, ba -da boop, ba -da boop, right there. Uh, I wanna say real quick before this uh, stream ends, don't forget guys, we're only 30 patrons away from the 800 mark, which means at 800 I'm going to give away one of these two pieces of flown space shuttle. Um, these are awesome little pieces off of um, Endeavor, or Columbia and Endeavor, I believe. Um, yeah, so these have actually been in space space rope and space filler yeah uh if you want a chance to win these guys i do giveaways uh to my patreon members patreon.com slash everyday astronaut i couldn't be doing any of what i do without you guys um that literally has made this career possible um makes it that i am able to put 60 70 80 hours of work of work in a week to bring you guys as much content as possible um so if you want a chance to win flown space shuttle i'll frame these up I'll ship them anywhere around the world. Um, I'll even like do a little card, a little thank you. So if you would like a chance to win that, head on over to patreon.com slash everydayastronaut where you can join our Discord channel. You can join our exclusive subreddit. Um, you get a bunch of other fun perks too. I, I try to keep that pretty updated with behind the scenes stuff. Um, and I just really quick wanted to remind you, so if, if you have like a, if you donate a dollar per month, you get your name in a hat one one time. Um, $10 a month, 10 times, et cetera, et cetera. And you, you still, so, if you stick with me uh, at 900, I'll be doing giveaways every 100 patrons from now on. So, um, so as long as you stay a patron member, you'll you'll have your chances of of, uh, of winning some flown space shuttle material. So again, thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys. Um, it really really means a lot. Um, and Arvid Nilsson asks if I've read up on the Norwegian rocket. Uh, really quickly, I actually did. I still haven't dove into it enough um, to really, really, really have an understanding of it because it, it sounds like a crazy story, uh, but I started to read about the rocket first and then I got distracted because of uh, Copenhagen Suborbitals, who I was still gone and in transit on Saturday when they launched. Um, Copenhagen Suborbitals, those are awesome guys. They're basically a makerspace making actual rockets, like big enough rockets to eventually fly people on suborbital space. They're basically taking hardware store you know, consumer grade stuff and building actual liquid fuel rockets. It's incredible. I visited those pe those guys out in 2015 in Copenhagen. I love them. Uh, check out their stuff. D just search Copenhagen suborbitals. Follow them. Stick around at their work. If you happen to live in Copenhagen or near it, say Momo or something like that, uh, go work with them. Donate some time to them. They are if you know if you are like a welder or something or an engineer. It's awesome stuff. So. Um, the, oh, well, thank you, E E Fortney twenty eight. Oh, thank you guys. Um, uh, uh, some people in my Discord members are mentioning that it seems like the quality may have dropped. Just refresh it if it did. Um, <laughs> great guys, don't get on their subs. Welcome I totally back. get that. We are about to reach the payload deployment phase of today's mission. Should coming up in approximately fifty seconds. Now the payload is mounted to stage two on what we refer to as a payload adapter. And after the stage separation signal is sent, there is a spring-loaded band around the base of the satellite. What it'll do is it'll fire and open up. And then there are four compression springs inside the payload adapter that will gently push the Mira Petit satellite away from Falcon 9. And that spacecraft will continue on to its final destination in geostationary orbit. Payload separation should be in about 15 seconds. We'll be able to see it live, hopefully. And there you go. You can see the Mira Petit satellite just kind of. in front of you with the sun behind it, giving it a nice backlight. Oh, there we go. And successful separation. Payload separation confirmed. Perfect. This is your third payload separation confirmed. You can see it. It's looking good. And with that, 
that brings Falcon 9's mission to a close today. And of course, that's the end of our webcast. So a great thanks to our customer, PT Telecom Indonesia, for entrusting us with tonight's mission. A thank you to satellite manufacturer SSL, the 45th Space Wing for providing range safety today, and to the FAA for licensing today's launch. We'd also like to thank all of our viewers for tuning in to this late night or early morning launch, depending on where you are. And if you are excited about what you've seen here tonight and want to join us on our mission, please visit spacex.com slash careers to check out our current list of job postings. You can also follow our website and social media platforms for updates on our next missions and milestones. But until next time, have a good night. Woo. Great job as always, SpaceX. Man, they're making this look so easy. Uh, yeah. Oh, someone asked me real quick where you get these globes. Go to my website, everydayastronaut.com. Uh, click on Partners. You'll see anything that I have in the background of the videos. Um, yeah, those are MOVA globes. Uh, they're like the coolest thing in the world. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Great mission. Um, yes, the first first stage. This is not the first second landing because the first second landing was SES-10. That was the first reflight of a, of a, a booster, an orbital class booster. Um, that was, again, uh, March 30th, 2017. That was the first time they had landed. Um, it was the first time they'd reflown, and they landed their, that booster. They just didn't reuse it again. So they've been reusing boosters. Um, most, of the way, most of the way through 2017, if they flew a booster, they would land it. Um, if they reflew a booster, they would land it. They kind of stopped doing that in 2018 as they're getting ready for Block 5 because, quite frankly, they had a lot of inventory of boosters that were really only meant to refly once. So, yeah, yeah, um, would it be, would it be nice if they showed any deorbit burn if they do that? They do, Paul, um, people ask me that quite often, they do deorbit stages, um, I think with geostationary, I don't know if they deorbit it, um, at Apogee, or if they put it into a, um, a graveyard orbit, I, I don't know what they do, with low earth orbit, they, they almost immediately can flip and deorbit right away for a low earth orbit mission. Um, but they do, Sp SpaceX is very aware of space junk. That's why they don't use pyrotechnics like on the fairings and why the payload deployer is, is a spring and a, and a collar. There's no explosives there um, so that they don't leave any additional space hardware in space. Um, so they deorbit at 100 kilometers, uh, according to Mega Fox. Uh, Mackenzie, hi. Uh, yeah, they were sending them to know what they did better on Block 5. So... Um, yeah, it's, oh, Thomas was able to see the booster coming back down. That is really cool that you could actually catch the people on the East Coast in Florida were actually able to catch the re-entry burn, uh, which is very unusual. That's really, really, really cool. Uh, do they re-air the uninterrupted landing? If so, where can we find it? They don't really re-air it. Um, it's, it's really, I mean, there's plenty of footage of that for the drone ship landings. Um, and it's just sort of one of those why things. It'd be a lot of extra work to pull the cards and then insert it into the stream at this point to match it up. Per like, wh what's, the, what's the, the point there? And it'd be a whole week later before they can retrieve the cards on the drone ship, bring it back, send it out to headquarters, blah, blah, blah. Um, it would just be a lot of time that's probably not worth, you know, the bunch of labor time to do that. Um, but obviously, they we see plenty of live streams of when they land on, back on land because um, you can just use ground cameras um, that are linked in to actually be able to you know see it land. So um, that is a, that is an idea there, Steph. I've actually I, I that is one question I do want to ask my friend is why don't they actually just put a big buffer on it and and let it uh, record and then buffer out later because we don't care. We don't need to see the landing happen in real time, but it might be better to just put a buffer on it and, and check it out. So that is that is good. That is a good one. Um, uh, oh, there is okay. There is a on Reddit. There is a uh, which booster dies. Um, so yeah, we are not sure. Uh, it sounds like it is probably going to be a block five booster that does the in-flight abort test. Interesting. So maybe they expect to be able to recover the booster. We'll see. Um, do I know the small rocket from Arca, Flight of the Aero Spike? Yes, I'm aware of the small rocket firm Arca. Um, it's. I don't know what I think of those guys. I don't like the idea of an SSTO that 
isn't reusable that I yeah I, I don't know I we'll see they've had some weird legal issues in the past but I I'll, I'm willing to give them a chance as long as they produce some hardware that actually starts flying and maybe they will and if they do I'll be there to cheer them on a hundred percent um and if they produce a working rocket and they are able to do it at an aggressive price, even if they aren't reusing any of it, sweet, good, awesome. I'll be there to cheer you on 100% for sure. Um, the cloud rules thing, the main thing is lightning. They can't have lightning within 10 or 15 miles. And cumulus clouds create lightning that the rocket can't fly through those either. Um, that's the, cumul or the, the cloud rule. So, um, Eugene, how does the second stage move away from the first stage? There's actually a hydraulic pusher. There's three, I believe, pushers on the actual, like, around the ring almost, and then a, a center pusher that is inside, um, that it basically is kind of in inside the vacuum nozzle of the second stage, and all, all those things work in tandem to, to push and let go of the, the upper stage. Um, yeah. So, um, guys, I, I got to tune out. Um, I'll be covering, the next one is Parker Solar Probe. On a Delta IV Heavy, which is another one of my favorite rockets, it's the big giant orange three-core rocket um, by ULA. It's a NASA mission to the sun. I have a lot of work to do leading up to that mission. Hopefully, I'll have uh, a video out before – two videos out if, if I do my job right before then. Um, if Remember, again, if you want to actually be able to read up on upcoming missions, guys, check out my website. Please use that as a resource. Show your friends. Um, I do this for you guys, so I now have a pre-launch previews. I'll try to organize this better so they're for sure by, by date. Uh, but yeah, you can just click on Parker Solar Probe. Look at this. Liftoff time. What it is. Who's launching it. When, where, why, how, blah, blah, blah. Parker Solar Probe. I've got you covered, baby. You just go to my website. Just go to everydayastronaut.com. Why aren't you there now? What are you doing? Well, what are you? Why aren't you there? Uh, and, and look at this. Oh, not public speaking. Look at this new shop. I do want to show you these new t-shirts. I, I want to, I've got some coming. I'm not going to really show them off until, uh, they are in my hands and I'll take pictures. Um, I'm really excited about these shirts. Um, I just kind of whipped them up real quick. Um, these are going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait for you guys to see them if my website works. So here's one of them. I think this is going to be super cool. Super cool, super neat. I want it on my face or on my body. One of the two. And this is another new one, science. And there's another new one that's, I don't even have it in the web store because it might suck. Um, but these are actually available now if you guys want. Um, but I just haven't checked them out myself yet. They're on, in the mail. So um, that's so cool. Loopy does confirm in our Discord channel that he did see the reentry burn. So here's, here's one that I think is going to be really cool. Look at that. Do you want a Saturn V on your chest? Yeah, I mean a Saturn V engine. The F1, the Aerojet Rocket Dyn F1 engine that produced 1.5 million pounds of thrusts, and you want this shirt on your chest because why wouldn't you want that? Uh, yeah, so that's a cool one, but this one I'm really excited about. So yeah, if you guys want these, just head on over to everydayastronaut.com. Um, everydayastronaut.com. Do it, do it, do it while my website is slow. What is going on? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's. I'm going to wait. I do want to see this. I want to show you guys this one. Um, I'm going to be down at the press site for Parker Solar Probe. Unfortunately, Ryan, and hi, Ryan, how are you? Um, I will not be down for Parker Solar Probe, unfortunately. I tried, and I just am not going to make it happen, unfortunately. Um, so sorry if you were planning on me being there. I can't. Boo. So yeah, here's another one. Look at this one. I know you guys want this one. So again, check it out, everydayastronaut.com. Do it. What's your excuse? So there you go. Well, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget, if you guys want a chance to win flown space shuttle hardware, everyday astronaut, or patreon.com slash everyday astronaut, those will be going away at 800, 900 patrons. Something big will be coming up for 1,000 patrons, and I'll continue to do cool, fun stuff um, every 100 patrons. So if you want a chance to win cool stuff, patreon.com slash everyday astronaut. Obviously, that helps me continue to do what I'm doing. You can join our exclusive Discord channel. My website might be getting slammed right now. If so, sorry if it's slow. Uh, it looks like I have a 502. Lots of people looking at it. Sorry. Just check it out in a minute. Uh, but thank you for checking it out. That's great. I, I like that you guys are checking it out. <sighs> That's going to be it for me, guys. Uh, I'll see you guys here on Friday night for me, Saturday for most people, and technically Saturday 
time anyway, but it's like early Saturday morning from the East Coast for Parker Solar Probe. Um, I'll stay up for you guys. I'm really excited about that mission. So join me then. Tell your friends. Find me on Twitter. Find me on, on Instagram. Let's hang out. And I'll see you guys soon. That's going to do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people. Bye, everybody. Thank you.